Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about celiac disease or known as gluten sensitive enteropathy. Now what is celiac disease? It is an immune mediated enteropathy which is triggered by ingestion of gluten containing cereals like wheat, rye, barley and this occurs in a genetically predisposed person. We will discuss the pathogenesis firstly. Now the, in the person who is genetically predisposed the pathogenesis of the celiac disease is the gluten which is present in the wheat, rye or barley is broken down into gliadin. The gliadin is the alcohol soluble fraction of the gluten. Now this gliadin is resistant to digestion by gastric, pancreatic or small intestinal proteases. Because it is resistant to digestion, it induces the production of interleukin-5. The interleukin-5 production further stimulates the activation of intraepithelial CD8 lymphocytes. This is of very much importance because it is of diagnostic importance also. The activation of CD8 lymphocytes take place and the CD8 lymphocyte further attack the enterocytes and lead to epithelial damage over there. Because the uh, now epithelial has been damaged, the gliadin which was present in the lumen of the intestine, it enters into the lamina propria. In the lamina propria, there is an enzyme known as tissue transglutaminase and it helps in deaminating the gliadin peptide. Now this deaminated gliadin it interacts with the antigen presenting cells and specially antigen presenting cells having HLA-DQ2 and HLA-DQ8. This uh, antigen presenting site now uh, these cells now further activate the CD4 cells and CD4 cells further lead to tissue damage. This is the pathogenesis we will understand repeat it in this diagram also. So we can see this is the gluten which is broken down into gliadin. Now this gliadin it interacts with the epithelial cell and it leads to uh, it activates the intraepithelial. These are the intraepithelial CD8 lymphocytes which are activated and which will lead to tissue injury. Also the gliadin passes into the lumen into the lamina propria here it interacts with the tg uh, tissue transglutaminase enzyme gets deaminated and then antigen presenting cell presents this antigen to the cd4 cells which will lead to further tissue injury this is the pathogenesis going to the morphology morphology uh, importance is that uh, biopsy specimens for diagnosis of celiac disease need to be taken from either second part of the duodenum or the proximal duodenum because these are the parts which are exposed to highest highest concentration of the gluten and these are these will be diagnostic in the celiac disease now in the histopathology we have to note the there are three main features the first feature is increase in intraepithelial CD8 lymphocytes, which we already discussed. It, it has a role in pathogenesis. So CD8 intraepithelial lymphocytes. Second is the crypts, they proliferate. There is crypt hyperplasia and there is villus atrophy. These are three finds, findings. Also, there is increase in mitotic activity because there is increased rate of epithelial turnover. But uh, this morphology, this histology can be seen in other diseases also. So combination of histology and serology is most specific for diagnosis of celiac disease. Seeing the morphology, uh, for morphology the grading method is also used. It is known as Marsh grading. So here we can see these are the, uh, the these are the intraepithelial, these one. These one are the intraepithelial lymphocytes. There is villus atrophy. We can see the villi have been shortened. This is villus atrophy. And there is crypt hyperplasia seen. Uh, in further, the, uh, if the disease progresses, the villi have been shortened very much. There is total villus atrophy and there is increase in intraepithelial lymphocytes. Now going to the serology. In serology, mostly for a patient presenting with celiac disease, 
firstly we go for serological test because these are non invasive tests so in the serological part the most sensitive tests are iga antibodies to the tissue transglutaminase enzyme or iga or igg antibodies to the deaminated gliadin these are the two main important tests going to the clinical features now clinical features the celiac disease can either present in adults or can present in childhood only in adults it mostly per presents around age 30 to 60 years and is associated with symptoms like anemia there is malabsorption there is chronic diarrhea bloating chronic fatigue and sometimes the disease remains silent also in case of pediatric celiac disease the disease mostly begins uh, between the ages of 6 to 24 months uh, after the introduction of gluten to the diet and when the uh, gluten has been introduced to the diet the symptoms which can be seen are irritability there can be abdominal distension anorexia chronic diarrhea a failure to thrive can be seen in such children weight loss and muscle wasting these are the clinical features associated going to the associated diseases with the celiac disease the celiac disease is associated with a skin lesion which is known as dermatitis herpetiformis in almost uh, around 10% of the patients have this disease also the rate of cancer is the rate of malignancy is higher in celiac disease and two major malignancies associated are enteropathy associated t cell lymphoma and other is the small intestinal adenocarcinoma these are the two main malignancies associated uh, now uh, mostly the treatment part is the restriction of the uh, gluten uh, diet gluten uh, the patients are suggested for gluten free diet and uh, the symptoms mostly go off with the gluten free diet only uh, this was all about the celiac disease if you like this video do like share and subscribe to this channel thanks guys for watching this video